Thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I mention it, I know people talk about this all the time, but every time I say your name, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, create a name when they get into show business. Uh, Vin Diesel is one of my favorites. It's such a cool name. It's a good name. Isn't it? Vin Diesel. There's no way to say Vin Diesel in an uncool way. It's That's a, true. you know, it's like you, you, you try and you're like, oh, Vin Diesel. Still sounds cool. That's a good point. Yeah. Vin Diesel. Yeah. I'm gonna keep saying it to you. <laughs> Vin Diesel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did you, uh, I mean, when I came up with Conan O'Brien, I was drunk. Uh, <laughs> I just needed a name and blah. I was Chip Whitley. Uh, Wait, but, Conan's one of the coolest names on the Conan, planet. Conan, yeah. No, it's, well, here's the problem. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than Conan. If you had been named Mark, you might have changed it to Conan. Well, the problem is it was the disparity between what the name evoked for people and what I looked like growing up. I was, I was, very, I was 6'4", 150 pounds when I was a teenager. Wow. And when you adopt the name of like, it's like being that skinny and si what's your name? I am Thor, you know? <laughs> The disparity made people want to hurt me. Uh, and, it and it probably made you want to play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. Um, that's where I was more comfortable. Uh, <laughs> but how did you get the name uh, Vin Diesel? How did you get that? I, I was a bouncer for nine years in New York City. Mm -hmm. And in New York, when you're a bouncer, the last thing you do is ever tell everybody your real name. Right. Because of all the problems they get. Sure, happen. you don't want them like looking for you later exactly. on. Exactly. So. The, the other bouncers started calling me Vin Diesel. Right. And that stuck. It stuck, yeah. Diesel, I just thought you like looked at the back of a truck and it was like, what's your name? I'm Diesel. <laughs> I'm home heating oil. <laughs> I'm low maintenance, no spark plugs. <laughs> yeah, it could have gone a lot of different ways. Now that there's alternative energy sources, you'll have to be Vin Solar at one point. <laughs> Vin Hybrid brings you, uh, Okay, I I'm like wasting that. all of our time now. Okay, um, okay, okay. I also want to compliment your voice. You have, I've never, I don't like my voice. I think you have a very cool, mm. menacing uh, baritone. Mm -hmm. you, do you always, do you get that, you know, like when it, you were very young? My voice started changing when I was about 16, 15. Right. And my friends would, I would call my friend's house and their mother would pick up the phone and they'd say, oh my God, who's this? Right. Uh, it was, it, it, it's Dave there. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was uh, it was a sign of the times that my voice was changing into a man's voice from my wow. kids' voice. Wow. I hope one day that happens for me. I. I, <laughs> I, used to, I, swear, I swear to God, I had a son. This is true. I had a summer job when I was like 19, and I used to pick up the phone and go, "I'll get the congressman for you," and they'd say like, "Okay, ma'am, thank you," and I'd be like, "No." <laughs> That's true. It's interesting that you say that because the next movie I'm doing uh, is non-English. Uh, Hannibal is going to be not done in non-English. So it's we we hired the guy that translated the script for Passion of the Christ mm -hmm. uh, to translate our script into Greek, Latin, and Punic. Right. So hopefully the voice can carry in another language. So so it's going to be your voice doing uh, the the, the lines. Be, You're going it, to. It, it would be something like. Mors bona, angvult bella tora veru, sivi de glace alpina, venet sivi de campis africae ad dentibus. That's very cool. Thank That's you. Cool. All right. That was, that was, that was, all right. You know what we're going to do? <laughs> we taped the show a little before it airs, so I'm going to put up you saying horrible things in Cairo. <laughs> <laughs> Just you get in trouble. No, please. Don't. Yeah, please. it's too late. No, uh, no, <laughs> I do not like kittens. No, uh, no, no. I will destroy puppies. Uh, <laughs> now you know it's funny. You, you've, and something I admire about you, you made it huge as an action star. But and we're talking about this tonight with your role that you're doing now. You're not afraid to really take on these challenging acting roles, and and that that you know sort of you'd think were for more of a character actor. Mm -hmm. And you, I think you've sort of proven that action star, character actor, they're not mutually exclusive. Well, the action term, the action star term is relatively new. Right. We, we didn't really label Clint Eastwood or Sean Connery right. as action stars, but they were doing action. Um, and for me, it's always been about the role. Now, this is, I should explain a little bit about what this movie's about. You're playing an actual 
character. I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I, the, a person who uh -huh. really lived, Fat Jack uh, Denorcio, am Fat, I saying it? Fat Jack Denorcio. It's, it's the largest mafia trial in history. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 defendants, 76 accounts. Uh, there has been, uh, it's been two and a half years right. this trial has been going on. This is in the 80s. Right. Uh, and I played this guy, this incredible guy, Jackie DeNorcio. Who's a very, a very a likable, funny, charismatic character, but also it's a big physical change for you. It's a what huge physical change because I had to gain weight and I had to age 15 years. And mm -hmm. I remember talking to Sidney Lumet saying, I, I love the character, but how am I going to look like mm -hmm. Jackie DeNorcio? Mm -hmm. And he said, Vin, we have ways. And little did I know it was two hours of makeup every morning to, to look like Jackie DeNorcio. Right. And I had to eat a quart of ice cream a day. I had to eat a quart, yeah. <laughs> you poor bastard. And you don't know how hard that is. <laughs> you don't know how hard that is. I've always wanted to just, just be an actor for, for like a year just and only take roles where I, you must gain 90 pounds <laughs> and uh, have sex constantly for this role. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Did, uh, did, and, and you actually met the, uh, he's passed on since, but he, you met uh, Jack DeNorcio, is that right? I met, I, I had talked to Jackie DeNorcio on the phone, and then on the first day of shooting, he came down to the set. Mm -hmm. He was in the hospital, mm -hmm. but he found a way to come down to the set uh, and bless the set, and he kicked everyone out of the trailer and just had a heart to heart with me. Mm -hmm. For me, what was interesting was up until that point, I'd been just kind of collecting the attributes and mannerisms and physicalities for the character. But once I met him, and once he opened up and, and really told me what this was about for him, I was able to take that spirit into the character. Mm -hmm. What was equally heavy, three weeks into production, the day before the ending summation scene, Jackie DeNorcio passed away. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to come to the set. Uh, I can't tell you how heavy an experience it is to play a person whose eyes you look into, and three weeks into the process, they pass away. Right, you're sort of bringing them to life, and that's got to be very, yeah, very trippy. It, it was trippy, but uh, I, I guess it's all in the film. I guess mm -hmm. it's, it's. Well, we have a clip here. What do we need to know for uh, for this scene from Find Me Guilty? Uh, this clip is when. Jackie DeNorcio announces that he is going to defend himself mm -hmm. in this trial. And he, yeah, he's not a lawyer. And, and he's we not a lawyer, yeah. Let's take a look at this clip from Find Me Guilty. I got the right to defend myself, am I correct, Judge? Yes, yeah, you're correct. Have you had any legal experience? Uh, well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? I've been in prison half my life. <laughs> Sometimes I think I had too much legal experience. Mr. DeNorcio, have you heard the saying that a man who represents himself has a fool for a client? Now I have. Is it true, Judge? Yes, sometimes it is. So that means sometimes it ain't, right? Very likable guy, you know? You know? <laughs> Good guy. Uh... Did you, I just had to ask you this before we went, because we were talking about you growing up. Did you, clearly women find you very attractive now. Was that always the case when you were growing up? Was that the case? They do? Yeah. No, they... Was w that always women the and, case? Women and two men here, yeah. Oh! And they're both in the band. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but... Was, that, was it like that for you growing up? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't like that. Uh, huh. <laughs> Was it like that growing up? Um, I remember the first date that I had. Mm -hmm. It was a, a, a big deal to me because it was Valentine's Day. And I had gone to the uh, Ticket Tron place here on, in, in Times Square and mm -hmm. waited all day to get tickets for Dream Girls. Mm -hmm. This is big. You're taking uh, someone out to the theater. That's yeah, big. Yeah, huge. How uh, old were you at the time? 16. That is, that's class, yeah. A romantic. I mean, it was like such a big deal. I was like, yeah. Dad, what play to, what should I do? What's going to be special for her? Right. 
And he said, go take her to Dreamgirls. So I went, and he got, I said, I can't afford Dreamgirls, but you can wait for five hours and get tickets for really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so I waited for five hours and got tickets really cheap, and I, and I put on a suit, and I, I got some change together, and got some flowers, and went over to pick her up. And she wasn't there. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and two minutes later, <laughs> and two minutes later, I see her pull up, and a, gr a guy is driving her. Oh, my God. So me, being the, the nice kind of guy that I am, I went over to the car, ripped him out, bang! <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, ho I hope you put the flowers down <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah, I had Bam! <laughs> Bing! Yeah. And so, uh, but then we... You must have been heartbroken, though. I, I took it pretty good. Yeah. I, I, we ended up going, she told me, gave me a wonderful excuse. Mm -hmm that he was giving her driving lessons. <laughs> <laughs> and that worked for me. I was Good for you. That's nice. in love. What was it going to do? That's nice. That's nice. I just pictured the flowers going, woo. Because <laughs> that happened to me a few times. All right. Uh, I really enjoy talking to you every time you come on the show. I uh, love being on yeah, the show. Thanks Everybody for being here. knows it. Find me. Uh, find me. <laughs> we'll get the word out. Uh, Everybody's <laughs> talking about it. Did you hear him get on Conan? <laughs> Is he been on Conan? Is he been on Conan? Is he been on Conan? We're doing a two-man show and touring the state. You don't want to do a two-man show with me. Uh, <laughs> Find Me Guilty uh, opens on Friday. Vin, thanks for being here. Vin Diesel, everybody. Thank you. Jimmy and Singer coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.